Clinical reasoning, or similar terms such as critical thinking or clinical decision making, are commonly used to describe a key process for healthcare professionals. Specifically, clinical reasoning is the cognitive process of taking a patient's or a client's history and then evaluating their current condition and finally integrating that knowledge for assessment or treatment plans. An easy way to think of clinical reasoning is as problem solving in the clinical environment. Now that we have a basic understanding of what clinical reasoning is, why is it important for us as kinesiologists to, to understand and learn about this? Well, it's important to understand clinical reasoning because being competent in clinical problem solving is essential to being competent as a healthcare professional. Said another way, when a kinesiologist is competent in clinical reasoning, that means we are able to appropriately apply technical skills and clinical knowledge in practice. In fact, the College of Kinesiologists in Ontario practice standards explicitly state that clinical reasoning is an essential competency for kinesiologists. Practice standard 3.5 in the 2014 Essential Competencies of Practice for Kinesiologists in Ontario speaks to clinical reasoning most directly. In this essential competency, kinesiologists are expected to apply critical thinking and decision-making in practice. Due to the competence of clinical reasoning informing all clinical decisions, clinical reasoning can be thought of as underlying every single practice standard. It is our responsibility as registered kinesiologists to ensure that we are meeting this standard. The better we are at clinical reasoning, the better we are able to help our patients or our clients. But also, if we have a better understanding of our own clinical reasoning process, then we will be better able to reflect on our own problem-solving approach. What we learn from self-reflection can, can inform our work with future patients or clients. Now, as kinesiologists, what should we know about cl clinical reasoning so that it can help us reflect on our clinical problem solving? Well, one of the most important concepts to understand about clinical reasoning is that it is not a single straightforward process that is easy to develop. Instead, pr healthcare professionals have spent years integrating a wide variety of basic science knowledge and then taken that knowledge and specifically organized it to understand what is happening clinically. Finally, the social and physical practice environment or the context that you are working in can have a huge influence on your clinical reasoning. For example, the equipment available to you or the expectations of colleagues can influence your clinical problem solving choices. I want to spend a bit of time highlighting the different cognitive processes that a kinesiologist uses in more detail, because this is the component of clinical reasoning that can change dramatically within the first five years or so of working within a certain field. Which cognitive process we use can help us identify where we are in our own journey of novice to expert within that field of practice. When we are novices, we use a very deliberate cognitive process termed the hypothetical deductive model. This cognitive process is very similar to what we all likely learned in science classes in elementary school. First, you form a hypothesis, then you collect information to either support or refute the hypothesis. Often, collected clinical information is linked back to basic science knowledge to support the kinesiologist's reasoning as part of this uh, hypothetical deductive model. This is a really mentally taxing cycle of hypothesis testing that continues until a decision can be made. As we gain expertise, what we actually do is we begin to incorporate a less deliberate form of cognitive processes in which we recognize patterns based off of previous experience. This decision-making process often doesn't require conscious thought. If you recognize a pattern in your cognitive process and were asked, to explain why you made a certain decision about a patient or client, then you would have to do that mentally taxing work of fully constructing the knowledge behind your decision making for the first time. However, bits and pieces of knowledge from your previous experiences would come to your mind to inform you as to what to do. 
This combination of recognizing patterns and pulling those targeted bits of knowledge from previous experience is termed the dual processing theory. So now that we know about the hypothetical deductive model and the dual processing theory, how does this information about clinical reasoning help us? Well, if you're a novice in a certain clinical area, then you'll be able to understand why you take longer to reason through scenarios than more experienced colleagues. You should also not be afraid of making logical leaps that you just know are right. This is a sign that you're probably beginning to recognize patterns and making decisions based off of previous experience. If you're an expert, then this is the kind of reasoning you do nearly all the time. Unless you're confronted with a patient or client with something you haven't experienced before or have rarely experienced. It is important to note that neither cognitive process is right or wrong. Merely, as you become an expert, you find more efficient ways to perform clinical reasoning. So to conclude this video, I want to leave you with a challenge. Following a day of working with patients or clients, reflect on what, how you made your decisions. What kind of reasoning process did you use for each patient or client? Did it differ for different types of patients or clients? I hope you will enjoy learning a little bit more about the thinking process you use as part of this reflective process.